inside and half of our group off the counter. So, I mean, the coincidence was just uncanny. We, we tried it two or three weeks and then we moved back outside and everyone was back. So I was like, clearly there's some people who aren't okay with it, but they're just not okay with saying they're not okay with it. So, well, so. you know, good for you for being uh, cautious and you know, trying at least, right? And yeah. Hopefully the kids are doing okay with it. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're pretty happy either way as long as they get to be together.
So look around and look at the diversity uh, that God's created among us here at College Hill. It's a wonderful and a beautiful thing. And so we thank God for that. And we, we demonstrate that uh, through our celebrations when we come together like this in worship. We also demonstrate it through our times of connecting in life groups or in our men's group. Uh, and in just other times when we can come together in hope groups and, and rally around the word of God as believers in Christ. And we also demonstrate honoring God in our way of service. And you're going to see that today as we uh, pack up backpacks. And so let me read a scripture, and then we will. Psalm 95 says this, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. 
his hand are the depths of the earth, and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands form dry land. Come.
and we're going to sing King of My Heart, so it's in your bulletin.
morning, CHPC family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Jennifer Cronk. I am the pastor of Children and Families here. And it is such a privilege to gather today and to worship our good, good father. Can we just thank him for just a second for this weather that he cleared up? So as we consider our God this morning, his holiness, his purity, his goodness, we have to recognize that we sometimes think that we know better than God. We have not loved him with our whole heart, soul, mind, or strength. And we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. So we want to take this time right now to get our hearts quiet and to repent. And repent simply means to turn away from our sin and to turn back towards God. We want to confess our sins before God. We agree with him that we have disobeyed his life-giving words. So let's together confess our sins before God, not with fear or shame, but with the relief and the expectation that come from knowing that God is slow to anger, quick to forgive, and filled with a love for us that cannot change. Let's pray. Mighty God, Many times we are okay with things being broken. Rather than offering forgiveness, we hold on to our anger. Rather than pursuing what is right and just, we ignore hard things. Rather than offering mercy, we continue thinking harshly of people. Gracious God, these are not the ways of your kingdom. Make us hunger and thirst for your good and perfect ways that we would see our need for Jesus. And being filled with his goodness, help us to live out your commands on earth. When we allow darkness to swallow the light, forgive us, Lord. When we make following Jesus a Sunday-only celebration, have mercy on us, Father. When hard hearts keep us from seeing and hearing and responding to the needs of others, let your grace fill us, O God. When the wars around us don't bother us, forgive us, Lord, and help us to care about those who suffer. When our caring becomes lazy, wake us up to seek fairness for our brothers and sisters. We come to confess our sin before you and before each other. Remove everything that divides us and let there be nothing to get in the way of our love for you and one another. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, hear the good news of the they gospel. They are forgiving! Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. And that proves God's love for us. In the power of the resurrection, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. So celebrate the freedom of forgiveness in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. And now, may God's overwhelming generosity towards us as displayed in his forgiveness empower and motivate us to practice that same generosity as we give back to God. In giving generously, we imitate the very character of Jesus who gave his whole life to rescue us from sin. We give in order to share the good news with the world through the work of his church and ministries throughout Cincinnati and all over the world. You can give right now through the church website at chpc.org slash give. You can see Jean or one of the others in the yellow vest, and you can uh, give in the black giving box, or you can donate on the church app or by texting the number that will be on the screen. Let's give like God gives to us, generously, cheerfully, and sacrificially. So now as we get ready to transition back to a time of worship and song, let's celebrate God's goodness to us in Christ, who has cast our sin as far as the east is from the west. Let's worship him together. You're hitting 
you that nothing can stand against you, that height, no death, no width, no length, no angels, no demons, or principalities, or nothing can separate us from your love. God, we thank you for your great love this morning. We thank you for all that you are. We thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. But we choose to continue to proclaim that you are good, that you are beautiful, that you are altogether lovely. So this morning we ask that you would continue to speak to our hearts, continue to dwell in the midst of us, and have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's uh, give everyone a huge hand from the band and uh, from Alan, to Carl, and Samuel on the camera, and uh, all that they did to uh, pull this off this morning in the midst of uh, a very interesting morning here. As you can see the vestiges of the nice little downpour we had around 8 o'clock or so this morning. and. Uh, 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 demonstrated what they really demonstrated. And by the way, I'm Drew Smith. I'm the, the pastor here. And um, usually at this time of the service, we have a children's sermon. And just want you to know, since we don't have a screen, we don't have that. But those that are watching online, you, or those of you here, you can go look at that later at the uh, chpc.org slash kids videos. K I D S V I D E O S. Um, or on the church Facebook page for the for the, the children's sermon, and uh, but uh, you know all the, the preparation that went into this time because we had to be prepared for out here and be prepared in there. You know, so I came, you know, prepared. Didn't know if I was going to need this and be preaching under, uh, this is my local uh, umbrella. I want to thank you for whoever donated this to me about six years ago. You left it in the church. It stayed in Lost and Found for a year. And once that happens, then it's free game. So uh, thank you. And as you know, this, this umbrella really fits my personality. Uh, but I also came prepared with, for the other way as well, never knowing what might break through as we're here this morning, but I don't think I'll need either one. Um, now, uh, at least uh, right now, what I do uh, wonder though with, with you, can, can you think back of other times that you were prepared for things and that it worked out well, you know, when you, you, uh, you were um, studied for a test, right? And, and it worked out well, you studied well, and then you took the test and it, it was great. Or, um, and, and you passed with, with flying colors. Um, or, or times that you, you packed just right for vacation. You know, prepared well. You had the what to bring. The, the peak place you were going had that what to bring, what to pack list. And it was just right. You didn't take too much, not enough. It was wonderful. And maybe also you can think of some times when you thought you were prepared. You, you thought you had everything where it needed to be and you didn't. You found out too late that you weren't prepared. You know, this... As I was um, uh, learning how to do video sermons and those kind of things, I was preparing for Good Friday service, and I wanted to. I, had, I was going to film this one on location, you know, on a, on a track. And so we had the script, we had the tripod, had two phones as, as cameras, um, had the place, the right time. We showed up there, you know, set it up, uh, started talking and going through the script, and then. The phone's battery just blipped out. You know, sometimes it'll go from 20 to nothing, you know, in like two seconds. But we had a second phone, and we brought the second phone on, got it set up, put it on the tripod, got back in place, started with the script, hit record, five seconds into it, 
message on the phone. Memory is full. <laughs> Thoughts we were prepared and weren't. Packed it up, went home, did another day. Maybe you've done similar things like that. You know, you, you've, you've prepared for a trip. Yeah, and you've packed, you've, you've made your reservations, the itinerary is set, you get to the airport, and what did you forget? Your driver's license, which you need these days to get on a plane. Now, I had a good friend who did, did this for an international trip, had it all planned, I mean, he had the shots, he had all the jacks you need to plug into electricity around the world where he was going, he got ready that morning, headed Got, be sure be sure he had his tickets, his phone was charged. He then went to look at his passport. Expired. Oh. Trip was done. He couldn't get a new passport in the next five hours that he needed to get to get it done. So it was done. But you can think about those times when you thought you were prepared and you weren't. Now, our passage today is about preparation. It's a, it's a story, a parable that Jesus tells us that is strong. It is a very challenging, actually harsh word from Jesus. And the basic point is, are you prepared to meet your maker? Are you prepared for judgment day? Now, I know right now, some of you are re reaching for the TV to turn it off. Or you're reaching for something to turn off. You're reaching for something to take your attention. Don't. Don't. Do, just give me 10 minutes um, just to set the expectations. The sermon's longer than 10 minutes. Uh, but just give me 10 minutes. So if you're ready to, to turn it off, don't do that. Just keep. Just. Just. Humor me for, for 10 minutes, all right? It's 9.40 right now, all right? So I, I, at 10 minutes, even if I say 10 minutes is enough, you, you're free to go if you want. But this message is a harsh, strong, challenging word of Jesus. That if you're prepared for that day, then the day is filled with joy. And if you aren't, then you're left out. And destruction, judgment, separation are the results. Now, our passage is in Matthew uh, chapter 25. It's the, uh, the beginning of one of the last three stories, the last, the parables that Jesus, that Jesus tells. And, and this parable, if you were here last Sunday, if you listened to the sermon, or watched the sermon last Sunday, um, you know that Jesus is setting up his return. That he, that a day is going to come that he is coming back. And he's saying, but you don't know when. You don't know when. So these parables are setting that up. That day is going to come, but you don't know when. So actually these next three, the next three Sundays, we'll be looking at these final stories that Jesus shares before his death. All right, Matthew 25. Let's uh, pray together. Almighty God, again, we thank you for your word, and we ask your spirit to in our lives so that indeed we will be prepared. And we will see you with joy. And we will experience your joy even today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. They, they, all, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, you know neither the day nor the hour. So his point is clear here. Every individual 
the responsibility, the personal responsibility to be prepared for that day, to be prepared to meet God face to face. The, the writer of Hebrews says it this way, it, it, just as it appointed for man to die once and after that to face judgment. It's Hebrews 9 verse 27. This story, this parable of Jesus then, of these ten bridesmaids, the, the virgins, it says in the passage, they're, they're bridesmaids for a wedding celebration, is an illustration about Jesus' return as judge. And an illustration for all people that we will meet God one day for that judgment. So these stories is, are we prepared? And how to get prepared for that day? Now, um, for those that are giving me uh, 10 minutes, again, thank you. And what I really want to encourage you to do is, is to get to know Jesus. See, I, I, Jesus is not one of those turn or burn kind of guy, fire and brimstone kind of guy. And if you first take some time just to get to know Jesus, read in your, your Bibles in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. The uh, first four books of the New Testament, they're, they're telling the story of Jesus, describing his character. And what you'll see there is Jesus is not a tyrant. You know? He's not mean. He's not scared or scary. He's not there to scare anybody. But he does come with challenges and words of truth. But you'll see he heals people. He feeds them. He's not the brokenhearted. He, he cares for those who are in need. And I found it true in my own Jesus' words are, are not to scare us. They're, 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 they're not to, to bring trepidation, but they are to bring life. And I've found that true in my life. That His words are life-giving. And I've found that as I engage with other people who are committed to following Jesus. Those are the relationships that are most meaningful. Those are the, the relationships that brings life to, to me. And so I found that to be the case. I found Jesus to be honest and true. Then what I encourage you to consider, to possibly think about, is that maybe Jesus is telling the truth. Maybe he is the one who knows what is coming. And what he wants is to prepare us for that day so that it will be a day of joy. Maybe Jesus is like you know, Google Maps or Waze or MapQuest. To look at what the traffic is going to be like. To look at where the congestion is going to be. That, that Jesus is the one who's saying, here is the path. Here's the right way to go to get to the place that you want to be. I've done that. You know, wake uh, uh, for an early morning flight. You, you get up, you know, and you're like, you know, I don't want to leave uh, three hours early, but when do I need to go and what's the way I need to go? And I, and I get out my, my app and I look at the traffic and on a number of occasions, it's told me, avoid the Brent Spence Bridge. There's a huge traffic jam there. There's construction and an accident. Don't go that way. And sure, you know, you get frustrated now. I got to leave a little earlier to, to avoid that, take the loop around and all that. And, but when I get there, I'm very thankful because I'm seeing people hurried and rushed and dejected. Some are just making their flights, other are missing their flights because they had to sit on the bridge for an hour. Maybe Jesus is doing that with us here. Consider that possibility. I believe it's true. And he wants to prepare us for, for that day so that we'll experience it with joy. Consider then his teachings. Consider Jesus' life. It is possible. It is possible that he knows the way of life today and forever. And that he is telling us the truth. I mean, look, even in the passage, he, the, the parable that he said, this day is to be one that's a celebration because it's all about a wedding feast. The, the kingdom of God, presence with God is, is a wedding feast, a, a celebration and a joy. So it's worth your time as a, as a doubter, as one that, see, first, I'm glad you're listening. I'm glad that you're here. Well, let's see. Oh, two more minutes. Um, I think I'll get it done before then. Glad you're considering the words of Jesus. 
and know that he wants that day to be joyous. And he wants to tell us that if we're not prepared for that day, that it'll lead to destruction and judgment and separation. Again, consider, go consider Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those first four books of the New Testament. Also, this fall, we'll be doing a class called Alpha. And in that class, it's designed for people who doubt, who have questions, who want a safe, honest place that they can push back, that they don't know if they believe. They, they want to, but they got all kinds of issues and, and concerns. All kinds of people you know, have, have let them down, but they, they still have, you still have this sense that, that maybe God is real. Maybe Jesus is who he says he is. And that Alpha class that we're doing this fall is a perfect way to engage around that. So thanks for those 10 minutes. <laughs> Made it in less than 10, uh, 9.49. But encourage you to stay on, even beyond the 10. And those of you that uh, you're, you're fine with that, you believe Jesus and you feel like you're prepared, well, there's still uh, some questions that this parable brings up that you might ask or others might ask. One of the questions, if you look at this parable, why didn't the bridesmaids who had the oil, why didn't they share it with the others? I mean, isn't generosity, isn't giving, so that, isn't that what, isn't that Christian? Isn't that a Christian notion? And it's like, yeah, it is. So that's a really good question. Uh, first, we need to understand a little bit what this parable um, is about. Because it, it can be confusing. You know, I mean, one, it's a, they're just the bridesmaids. There's no groomsmen in those days. It's sort of odd for us. And you're like, any wedding that I've been a part of, or and I've done a few, I'd be really scared to get the uh, well, wedding party, the bridesmaids and the groomsmen, and give them any kind of fuel, and certainly not give them money. So that would be destruction. Uh, but in those days, that was very common, because the bridesmaids would gather at the, in the village. And, and weddings then took a long time to prepare. And uh, the wedding feast, you know, they didn't have caterers then. They didn't have refrigeration. Uh, they did, hadn't discovered electricity uh, yet. They had it, just didn't know it. Um, so the, it took a long time to get prepared, and sometimes everything wouldn't be in place until the evening or until the night. And so the bridesmaids were there, ready, prepared for when the groom arrives and everything is ready, and the bride is ready, and then they would go meet the groom. They would lead a parade to the, the bride's house. They would give the groom and their bride, and they would take them through the village announcing the wedding and announcing the wedding feast to come so that all would be able to join in the village the whole village would celebrate so that's that's that would have been very common knowledge for jesus and the people that heard jesus tell this story um uh, but so you can knowing that story then you can hear why the bridesmaids with oil said no they weren't going to give the oil because if you have enough oil for five lamps but you have ten lamps there and you take that oil for five lamps and you spread it among ten, what's going to happen? It's going to run out about halfway through the parade. And then chaos will occur. Because, again, like I said, they hadn't found electricity yet. It was dark. And it would have been chaotic. It would have been uh, uh, absolutely embarrassing for the family. The wedding would have been a disaster. And the village would have been in chaos. It would have been terrible. So the, the, the five uh, bridesmaids that had the oil they, they did what was best, what was right, to honor the family, to honor the village. And they told those that didn't have the oil, if we, we can't give it to you, or otherwise, this will be absolutely terrible. So they told them no. And that's the point of Jesus, that part of the parable here, that it's your personal responsibility for your life with God. You have to honor. Whoa, what? Whoa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. right. um, uh, the, uh, uh, not, we meant that. Dramatic effect. <laughs> it is uh, your responsibility to own your relationship with God. You, you, it's not on anybody's coattails. It's not, not your, your mama's or your daddy's. It's their responsibility to raise you up. But ultimately, it's yours. It's church's responsibility. It's my responsibility to point you to the words of Jesus and point you to the way of, of, of this journey. But it is your responsibility to get on it. And so Jesus wants to be sure that you know you don't inherit being a follower of Jesus. You don't inherit 
of believing, trusting, and following Him. It is your responsibility. Now, the other question here is, why, why didn't he, why didn't he, uh, the, the master of the house, whoever was holding the door, and, and the, the, whoever was the, the bouncer at the door, why didn't he let them in? At, at the end, the five who were unprepared, how come they didn't get in? I mean, isn't forgiveness and grace and mercy a uh, part of, of the character of God? Great question again. And yes, God is full of love. He is love. And that, that love demonstrates itself in great mercy and forgiveness and compassion. And it demonstrates itself in great righteousness and purity and justice. As the psalmist says, as, as Jennifer read earlier today, God is slow to anger, quick to forgive, filled with steadfast love. And the, the writer of Hebrews tells us also, that God is so just and good, righteous and pure, that He is like a consuming fire. That any unrighteousness, any impurity that would enter into His presence is vaporized instantly. So, part of God's love includes the fullness of His character. And in a way, everybody wants justice, right? We, we want things to be right. We want what is evil to be destroyed. We want what is wrong to be made right. We want that in our world and we want that in our life. And where does that idea come from? Where does that idea come from that, that justice is, the, is, the, is real and good? That we want what is fair? I believe that that idea is planted in us because we're all created in the image of God. That, that very notion comes because God's character demonstrates it in our very soul, whether we believe in Him or, or not. But here's the, the challenging word, that righteousness, that purity, that justice that we want on others also comes to bear on me and you. That we're judged by God. And those, whoever they may be, who are found ill-prepared for the wedding feast are not allowed in. Jesus is teaching us that clearly. Unless we've prepared, unless there is oil in our lamp, then we too will be separated from a holy, pure, righteous God because of our own impurity, because of our own disobedience, because of our own evil within us. We do not neither you nor I nor anyone measures up to the justice of God. And so in this parable, what Jesus is telling us, there are those who take taken responsibility to be prepared. They're right in their relationship with God. And now, they are with Him. And there are those who aren't. And they face that stark statement of the consequences of bearing the guilt of their own evil. I never knew you. And the door is closed. For them, at that point, it's too late. They aren't prepared. That's why you couldn't be come in. You couldn't be let in. You needed to know that there is a day of judgment. And there are those who are in and those who are not. So that brings to the last and most crucial question. How do I prepare? What does the oil symbolize? Well, let me read um, Hebrews 9 again. But I'll read a couple sen a sentence before and a couple sentences after the one. You know that passage that I read about after everybody dies and then comes judgment? Let me read uh, chapter 9 of Hebrews, verses 26 through 28. And I'm sorry it's not in the written material uh, for you. But you can look it up now or look it up later. Hebrews 9, 26 through 28. But now he, Jesus, has appeared once for all at the end of the ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself. Just as man is appointed to die once, and after that to face judgment, so also Christ 
was offered once to bear sin. And he will appear a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Now, hear the, the language that the writer of Hebrews uses here. That Jesus is the one who does away with sin by sacrificing himself. Here they says he, he does away with sin. He destroys it by sacrificing himself. And then he goes on to say, it's Jesus who bears the sins of many. He carries, to bear means to carry, to carry of our sin. And sin, as we've mentioned before, is any disobedience of God. We do against God's right actions or, or actions that we don't do, uh, that He's called us to do, that are in alignment with His purity and His goodness. Whether it's a sin of commission, what we do, or a sin of omission, what we don't do, that separate us from God, that demonstrate our own impurity, and any drop of impurity cannot come in the presence of that which is pure without all become being made impure. So Jesus, in his death, carries the consequences of our sin. He carries the righteous judgment of God upon himself. Jesus takes it all. And in doing, offers us cleansing. Total cleansing. The total removal of the consequences of our own evil. The, 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 the sin that we commit. Removing all impurity from us. Dying for us on the cross. And then, after his death, he is raised from the grave. He is raised from the dead. He takes our sin, carrying it with us, and our evil, he carries it with us, and he puts it in the grave, and there it dies. There it is destroyed. There it is vaporized. Our impurity is gone. And when he rises from the dead, he demonstrates his conquering of our evil, of our sin. He symbolizes that he has fulfilled the, the perfect righteous judgment of God. In his mercy, is destroyed, vaporized, and we are made pure. God's justice, his loving justice is satisfied and we are prepared. Jesus, in his life, in his death, in his resurrection, he is the oil for our lamp. And as Hebrews 9 says at the end, so that now we can look forward to that day, whether it's our own judgment at death or whether it's Jesus' return to us. On that day, those who know him, those who love him, those who follow him, those who are in Christ, on that we look forward to joy and celebration. We receive what Jesus receives because he has received what we receive. We're rescued from judgment. In Jesus' life, death, resurrection, we are prepared for his coming whenever it might happen. The door is shut on them because they weren't prepared. They don't know him. They don't believe, trust, and follow him. But the good news, that not only in this passage, now in this Hebrews passage, but that the whole of Scripture teaches, that the whole of Scripture points to, is that Jesus, in Jesus' life, he shows us that he wants what is best. That he wants us to flourish. He shows us that he has the words of salvation. Even in the face of death. Even in the face of disease. Even in the face of starvation. Even in the face of horrific evil. Like crucifixion. He has shown us that he is the way of life. He has shown us in his death. That he takes upon himself our evil. 
that He carries our judgment to the grave. And then in the power of the resurrection, He destroys evil. He conquers sin and He gives to us His goodness and His purity now and forever so that when He returns, we will run to Him filled with joy, looking forward to being with Him and His people forever. So we are right and free to celebrate and rejoice at the feast because in Him we are prepared for whatever comes our way and we will not be separated from God. So those with the oil or those with Jesus, those without the oil for those without Him. Now, for, for those who, who aren't followers of, of Jesus today, for those that are um, considering it and wondering about it, again, I remind you, if you're, if you have to turn off after the first 10 minutes, um, but, uh, and if some that did, you can remind them, just to share with them this word, to consider Jesus. Put aside this, this stuff maybe you picked up from others. Put aside from the, the ways that maybe some of us, Jesus followers, haven't treated you like Jesus. That we, we have sinned. That we're filled with evil. And that has turned you away. Consider Jesus. That maybe He's trying to prepare you to live with Him now and forever. And, and if you're here... And that's true for you. And today, you want to say, how do I get oil in my lamp? Uh, and come talk to me, come talk to Daryl who was up here, or Hope, or other folks that were here. Anybody else, in the, for Jennifer who's up here, who's wearing the blue CHPC, folks, they'll glad to, to talk to you. Uh, and if they're not comfortable doing it, I told them we'll take them to somebody uh, who is. But there's plenty here who want to share with you how they, well, the same thing I did, how they found life. That, that, that Jesus has not only prepared us for life with Him in, in the days to come, but for life with Him today. Uh, so in, in, if that's your case today, and if you're not, today's not quite the day, but you're curious, then keep on reading, keep on listening, and continue to uh, um, consider the Alpha class and we'll do that this fall. Now for others, for others who are followers of Jesus, I want to start question for you. Are you prepared today? I mean, I want you to consider those other five bridesmaids who weren't prepared. They had a whole lot of stuff. They were invited to the wedding. They had the dresses. They had the oil. In some ways, the audience for Those that are still just sort of hanging out with Jesus, but they're really not. To really chat. So for everyone, for every, ask the question, do it now. Don't wait. Come to this parable. Amen. Amen. Let's, uh, let's pray. Almighty God. Uh, we do come before you and we thank you. We thank you for your written word, even in the, the challenging word, maybe even especially in the challenging words of Jesus. And we ask, as we ask in the, the beginning of this time and throughout, that you would continue to speak to us. You continue to open our minds and hearts and, and lead us, that, that we will continue and grow in trusting you, believing you, and following you. And that we would grow even in our joy of anticipation of being reunited with you. And, and you would, for those of us that, that follow you, um, uh, Lord, we pray you would continue to empower us to share this good news with others. To, to be, be real with the joy that you have given us so that we can encourage others. And, and, and Almighty God, we, we do pray for us as a, a congregation that even as a people, we would demonstrate your power. We would demonstrate um, that your, your, your love, your justice, your righteousness, your, your grace, your mercy in, in every way. Uh, continue to show us ways that we fall short so that we as a congregation would demonstrate you with even more and more clarity. And, and Almighty God, um, we also take this time when we lift up uh, the, the needs of this world. We pray, Lord, we continue to pray for the whole west coast of our nation and just the wildfires that are running rampant 
that many of us here have friends and family who are there. We pray your safety upon them. We pray for your church. We pray that, that, that the rains would come upon them, Lord, that you would take the, the, what is ever needed there to stop such destruction and death. And that your, your church, in the midst of such tragedy, would, would be a sign of your hope and your, your power and your goodness. And Lord, we, do, we pray the same for our nation, for our world. And this, again, as we engage with this coronavirus that has caused such disruption and, and death, we pray for those struggling in their own, um, their own uh, lives or, uh, on the line with COVID-19. Lord, we pray your healing. And we pray for those who are working tirelessly for a vaccine and for treatments. And, and Lord, we lift up our schools for the leaders, for staff, for teachers, for students. And Lord, we pray for our children and just how disrupted school has become. And, and, and we, we pray that their learning would not be stunted, but, but maybe what they lose in, in the, the classroom, they might gain in character or faith or fortitude as, as they experience this together, that you would take what is evil and make it what is right. You, Lord, you, you take death and bring life out of it. So we pray that for you do your work in their midst as well. And we pray particularly for the ways that we connect with, with Pleasant Hill and with whiz kids and tutoring. Pray your blessing upon that as well in this time. And, and Father, uh, we thank you again just for this time to, to gather. And that the, the rain came uh, and, uh, and went. And that we could gather to rejoice and praise you. Uh, we lift up as well those in need of your healing touch, whoever it might be. We pray particularly for Michael Parker, who's still recovering from a procedure on Friday. Pray that all would go well and he would be healed. And we lift up... Um, all of this, Lord, in the, the powerful name of Jesus, in his life and death and resurrection and his return, and that his quest to invite and call and lead all to, to know and to follow and to joyously be his. We lift all of this up in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. At this time, uh, you guys know uh, today is our day for packing uh, backpacks for our school of service at uh, Pleasant Hill Academy. And so uh, we would like for our Pleasant Hill Academy staff that are here with us today uh, to come forward, as well as our uh, children's pastor, and she can uh, say a prayer for them. Uh, and we have something special that we would like to share with them uh, this morning. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the partnership with Cacho Presbyterian Church and with uh, Pleasant Hill Academy is a long-standing partnership and relationship that is very meaningful to both the school and to our church. And so uh, we're grateful to be able to serve with them and to serve them and to serve uh, our Heavenly Father. And so um, both Vicki Brown, if I say that correctly, and Shane Fletcher, I uh, want to really thank you guys just for being a blessing to us all. You can guys can come on up. Well, Kelly, and Colin, you guys can come up as well. Uh, just want to really just let you know how much we appreciate you and thank you for all that uh, you guys have been doing uh, just to bless us as a church uh, by serving in our community. And so I uh, just want to give you a small token of our appreciation. Uh, I know that you didn't expect this, but it was just something that we, we wanted to do just to bless you guys and say thank you uh, just for your service. So. And we count it a blessing. We count it a blessing to serve our families at Pleasant Hill. We count it a blessing to be a part of their lives. Um, a lot of times when we're, we're in the trenches, you, you get to know the real deal. Beyond the smiles, you get to know the real deal. And it's not always pleasant, but it is the work of the Lord. Um, and we are called to it. We are called to love on sometimes the unlovable. It oftentimes is uncomfortable, but that's just God chipping some stuff away from us, dealing with us. We thank you from Pleasant Hill and on behalf of our principal, Shauna McDowell. Um, we are blessed to have a principal that loves the Lord and loves people. We could not do what we do 
just her, her God touching her heart and mind to serve our babies and our families. We thank you all for covering our families, families some of you may never see, but know that you are making a tremendous impact. In all of our lives, some of us are going to uh, see the harvest, some of us plant, some of us pull away the weeds, um, but know that in the process, you all are all part of the process, and without you, we can't Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, if you would come up and just say a prayer, prayer blessing. This year we have uh, Kelly who's still serving with meals. Colleen, of course, is uh, Whiz Kids and Treehouse. Janet, overall administration and care. And then new this year, we have after school program that's, uh, that's operated and directed by Bernie Stavis. And so uh, let's pray for the team. And let's pray together. Father God, we thank you so much for Christ. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, these children who sometimes don't have anyone else in their corner, we thank you, Jesus, that you are always in their corner, that you have not forgotten them, that you know them by name, and you have their very names written on your hands. Lord Jesus, we pray, would you hold them fast in this time of distance learning, in this time when things are chaotic, we pray that you would be the anchor in their lives. God, would you keep them? Would you provide for their every need? Would you guard their hearts and minds? Would you help them to know that they have a heavenly father who loves them perfectly? And would you call those who don't yet know you to yourself? God, we pray for your provision for every earthly need. God, you are a good, kind father who delights to give good things to his children. So would you do that, God, and would you show your character to these families that you may be glorified and that they may walk with you all the days of their lives. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I just want to give you a little instruction before the charge and blessing and then Jesus University. Uh, for those who are staying around to help pack backpacks, uh, we're inside with those in our, our main quarter, our main lobby there. Uh, you'll simply line up social distance. You'll only handle the backpack that it's handed to you, and then you'll walk the line, and someone will drop the supplies in. So it's real simple. All you'll need to do is go inside and line up, and someone will be there uh, to help you with that. And again, stay around, because after our charge and blessing, then Jesus University will uh, bless us with a special song. Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we leave from here, we've been challenged. You know, are, are you prepared? Are you taking responsibility for your own walk with Jesus? That's the, the challenge that Jesus gives to us. And, but no, this, he has done all that is necessary. He invites us to come and receive him, to believe and trust and follow him. And he will do the work within us. As we leave from here in the midst of a world deeply in need of the love of God in Jesus Christ. He has called you and he is empowering you to go out and share that love with others. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. And be makers of peace. Amen. Amen. Those on the front row, if you can move your seats back a little bit. These dancers will need a little room.
favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children be his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children.